the world of alternative energy sources has witnessed its fair share of innovators, from people that claimed that they could make a car run on rainwater to engines running over 100,000 miles on a single refuel. All of these innovations spark interest in our world, especially since everything is getting more and more expensive, and we would all love a way to produce energy and even power our vehicles at a much lower cost. Now one such innovation is Troy Reed's permanent magnetic motor. Now Troy Reed stands as a pioneer whose work has challenged conventional physics and the boundaries of energy generation. Reed's name became synonymous with the magnetic motor technology, a groundbreaking concept that promised to harness the power of magnetism for generating electricity. In this video, we delve deep into the life of Troy Reed, his magnetic motor invention, its underlying principles, potential applications and the legacy that he had left behind. So let's start this all off with the creator and his quest. Troy Reed emerged onto the scene in 1994, unveiling to the world his remarkable magnetic motor. With the audacious claim of generating 7 kilowatts of power output, which was enough power to power an average household, and best of all, it didn't use any fuel to run. It ran using the power of magnetism. Reed's invention ignited both fascination and skepticism. A tinkerer as hard, Reed was part of a growing movement of enthusiasts who believed in the possibility of generating energy from magnetism, thereby challenging the norms of traditional energy sources. Reed's magnetic motor was unveiled through a demonstration video that showcased a lit bulb without any visible power source. The absence of attached wires highlighted the motor's ability to generate electricity independently, sparking curiosity about the underlying principles that drove this technology. This revelation marked a potential paradigm shift in energy generation, suggesting a world where perpetual energy could be harnessed without the depletion of conventional fuels. But Reed didn't stop at the light bulb. He raised the bar with an actual car. You see, Reed's ingenuity extended beyond the confines of homes. Reed aimed to take his invention to the roads with the Surge Car project. The Surge Car, equipped with Reed's magnetic motor, boasted impressive speeds of up to 85 miles per hour and plans were on the way to do more testing and in an article from 1994 there were even claims that production of the motor for the general public would begin by the end of that year. Reed also said that he had been contracted about coverage of the test run by among others 2020, 60 Minutes, Larry King Live, Primetime Live and CNN. A representative of CNN, Reed said, has actually seen the car and might broadcast daily updates during the journey. Now, Reed's inspiration for this groundbreaking technology unfolded through a series of dreams and visions, spanning over 35 years. The initial spark ignited in 1959, when he toiled as a machinist, earning a meager wage of 70 cents an hour. The turning point arrived three decades later, in 1989, when he decided to transform these vivid visions into a reality. With unwavering determination, he set a hand crank in motion, bringing to life the first Reed magnetic motor. This inaugural prototype stood 7 feet tall, tipping the scales at over 500 pounds and boasting four moving components that fueled a 500 watt generator. Fast forward to 1994 and Reed's latest model required two car batteries to initiate, which were promptly recharged by the generator. Standing at a modest 20 inches in height and weighing less than 200 pounds, this ingenious creation relies on just one moving part to power a 7,000 watt generator. And imagine if Reed's claims about the motor's performance held true. It would represent a remarkable technological leap. Imagine the freedom of residing anywhere, enjoying modern comforts, and never fretting about the electricity bill. Picture commuting to work or any destination without guzzling fuel, and even better, without leaving an environmental footprint. Now you might wonder, how exactly does this thing work? Well, at its core, the magnetic motor is rooted in zero-point technology, an unconventional approach to energy generation that taps into the forces of magnetism. Now, this motor consisted from a housing, crankshaft, two discs, a whole bunch of magnets and injector pins. Now, in this engine, the magnet placement is really important and the permanent magnets on the rotating discs were spaced equally around the edges. However, the magnets on one disc were intentionally misaligned with the magnets on the other disc, causing a magnetic pull or push. The stationary magnet holders inside the housing also add an array of magnets, but these are aligned with the magnets on the rotating discs. 
Then the engine also had injector pins, which were designed to go up and down and were spring loaded. Now the way this thing functioned was that as the crankshaft rotated, it caused the discs with the magnets to spin. The misalignment of the magnets on the discs and the stationary holders created magnetic interactions, potentially leading to repulsion and attraction forces. The four injector pin assemblies were driven up and down in a sequential pattern. Now as the crankshaft rotated, it interacted with the magnets and the pins to produce mechanical motion which could be turned into actual usable electricity or be used to power, let's say, your car. Now, while the intricacies of Reed's motor remain undisclosed, the principles of zero-point physics propose that magnetic forces can be converted into usable energy. And here is the thing. If you scroll through YouTube, Instagram, and even TikTok, you can find hundreds of videos showing the power of magnets being used to produce power. And if so many people are able to make it work, why couldn't he? So what happened to him and his creation? Well, Reed was really cautious when it came to investment and the potential development of his engine. Reed was aware that promising inventions like his often face challenges, including potential interference from large oil companies, to ensure that his investors were genuinely interested in advancing the technology for the right reasons. Reed carefully selected investors who shared his desire to see the motor in the marketplace for environmental benefits. But even if you find good investors, you still need to have a financial strategy. You see, Reed learned from the experience of other inventors who faced legal issues related to the violation of interstate security exchange laws to secure capital for the development of his motor instead of issuing stock to investors which had caused problems for other inventors, Reed chose a different approach. He provided his investors with promissory notes, i.e. IOUs. And these IOUs were reliant on the successful development and market availability of his invention. Reed planned to offer his investors the choice of either holding onto these promissory notes or exchanging them for stock once the motors became available to the public. I will say this way of investing seems a little scammy. Now way back in the early 90s, there was quite a buzz around his engine and even the US government was aware of its development. In fact, the federal government, particularly NASA, had volunteered to test the motor, indicating potential interest and recognition of the technology's significance. But nothing came from this. I searched everywhere and I could not find any public tests or demos from NASA. After this, everything kind of goes black. There is no updates, no demos, nothing. The engine disappeared as fast as it appeared. No news on investors, development, nothing. Then in 2006, a post was made by Troy Sun that due to financial problems and egos, the project was at a standstill. He did say that some of the technology made its way into easy go golf carts. He then says that his dad was busy with a different project and that the permanent magnetic motor technology company and Evelyn, which I assume is Reed's ex-wife, had moved to Costa Rico. So the tech was dead and not going anywhere. But Troy Reed's son did say that himself and his dad built a new motor that worked on the same principles and produced over 400 horsepower and that they would hopefully start working on it in the future. Well, it's been 17 years, so I'm guessing that that is not happening either. Now, after this post, there's just like a bunch of speculation. Um, some sources claim that Troy Reed died in 2006, but others say that he's still alive. Here, everything goes like really foggy. It's almost as if him and his tech just like disappeared. I can't find anything. But this sudden disappearance of his technology and him after this massive public boom got me wondering, why has nobody tried to replicate it? You see, the East Paintant is fully available and I actually used his Paintant to explain how the motor worked early in this video. Well, I think I know why nobody tried to replicate it. You see, here is the thing. Reed's motor, like many other proposed perpetual motion machines, faces fundamental challenges that make it unworkable. These challenges are rooted in the laws of physics, particularly the laws of thermodynamics. So let's talk about said laws. The first law of thermodynamics, conservation of energy. This law states that energy cannot be created or destroyed in an isolated system. It can only change forms. In the context of a perpetual motion machine, it means that any machine attempting to produce more energy than it consumes violates this law. Reed's motor, like other perpetual motion machines, claims to produce more energy than it consumes. 
This contradicts the first law, which implies that it is impossible to create a machine that can continuously operate without an external energy source. So let's put it in simple terms. If you have an X amount of energy as your input into a machine, your output can never be greater than said X amount. But it didn't just violate the first law, it violated the second law of thermodynamics as well, the law of entropy. This law describes the natural tendency of systems to move towards a state of greater disorder, or randomness, known as entropy. It states, in any energy conversion, some energy is always lost. In the case of the perpetual motion machine, it is impossible to create a system that operates with 100% efficiency, converting all input energy into useful work. Some energy will always be lost due to heat, friction or other inefficiencies. Consequently, perpetual motion machines that claim to operate indefinitely without external energy inputs violate the second law as well. So let's just explain the second law of thermodynamics in much simpler terms. If you have X amount of energy as your input, your output can never be greater or equal to X since there is always a loss of energy in conversion. In other words, if the engine produces 500 watts of power, an energy source greater than that had to be used to start the conversion. And I'm not pulling all of this out of my ass. This is the scientific consensus. Perpetual motion machines have been proposed for centuries and none have been successful. The scientific community widely recognizes the laws of thermodynamics and there is a consensus that perpetual motion is an impossibility based on these well-established laws. To end it off, I have seen some magnetic motors that seem to work like really well and every fiber in my being wants to believe that this technology is possible and viable. I mean, it will just make life so much simpler and better. But I also like having the laws of physics. It helps bring sense to the world we live in and everything works under said laws and it makes sense that it all should. So my logic says engines like these could never work. They might be cool, but they just wouldn't work. But my heart really wants to believe that it could be possible. But at the end of it, with all of this information, let me know what you think of this. Uh, do you guys think that these technologies somehow defy the laws of physics? Am I missing something? Let me know. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you did like it, you'll most probably like most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.